HP has got a new virtual reality visor coming out this fall. The first truly exciting piece of virtual reality hardware to come out in a year. Find out why it's so exciting this week on the VR Aperture. Welcome back. I am Destroy Troy. And like we said, we're covering this week the HP Reverb G2 Virtual Reality Visor. This visor is in collaboration with Microsoft, being that's a mixed reality visor. But interestingly enough, it's also a partnership with Valve. And if you take a look at the Reverb G2, you can see the resemblance it has with the Index. It's got virtually the same head strap, uh, just instead of using the ratcheting adjustment on the rear, it's got two Velcro straps for adjustment. Um, we actually like that ratcheting mechanism. It's very convenient, especially when you have your hands strapped into controllers that are like similar to the Knuckles controllers. They also got rid of the uh, what they call the eye relief adjustment, which allows for the displays to come in and out closest and really crank them up close to get that 130 degrees field of vision that the index has. And so those two things together are likely how the Reverb G2 is able to come in at a lighter weight than the index, which VR right now is not only a race to get the the best resolution it's also to try and make it as light and as small as possible so they probably made that decision in that effort to get lighter and smaller you could see that the headphones are the exact same headphones from the index headset we think that was a great move by hp to partner up with valve to use those headphones in their visor. We actually think that off-ear headphones should become the industry standard for virtual reality visors. It gives you the immersion effect of having the sounds come from all around you rather than from headphones is just a perfect pairing with virtual reality. Let me just say how good these headphones are on that they're gonna be putting into the G2 and that are on the index. We, I actually bought specifically $300 set of high quality wireless headphones to use in virtual reality. And bought the, when we were looking at the index, made sure that the headphones are removable because a lot of the headphones on visors these days are just mediocre and we wanted to be able to take them off and use that expensive gaming headset that we have. And but once we got the index and tried these off-ear headphones, we were blown away. The, we've never bothered to try and remove those headphones in preference to use our $300 wireless HD quality headphones. They're that good. Moving on, the, the face cushion is gonna be likely very similar or identical to the one that's found in the index, the kind of antimicrobial foam and the magnetic pop-in design. The lenses are also a product by Valve. Well, actually HP says it's a collaboration with Valve, but we think, we suspect that it's highly likely that these lenses are purely the product of Valve research and development when if you, were around for the leak of the upcoming, when the index was releasing, it was mentioned that they had gotten into making their own lenses specifically for virtual reality. And that was kind of exciting news because the, they have the money to put in to really do it right. And part of the news was that likely other companies would buy the lenses from Valve to put in their visors because why spend the money to do the research and development when Valve is already knocking it out of the park. They had made with the index considerable advancement in minimizing the concentric cir circles that are in Fresnel lenses or Fresnel lenses, however you want to pronounce it. By reducing the appearance of those concentric circles, it reduced another effect it's deemed God rays where you get glare from white lights within your display and cast a glare. These may be a generation two version of the index visor 
uh, lenses, but likely, and maybe some feedback from HP at most, but likely a true product from Valve, which is good because they had so much success the last time they produced lenses. But the thing that is truly exciting about this visor, what we're excited about is the resolution of this display. The visor is only gonna be, the bundle in fact, is only gonna be $599 including controllers, but the display will rival that of the Pimax visors, the 4K visors and 8K visors. They're multi-thousand dollar, or they've come down in some price, but they were multi-thousand dollar visors. And for the, the average consumer, not even in the realm of consideration, so likely why you didn't hear anything about them if you hadn't. The resolution on the display for on um, these Reverb G2 visors is 2160 by 2160, which a couple of things about that. One, if you don't, that those numbers don't mean a whole lot to you. Just know that the index resolution is 1400 by 1600 and the Cosmos is 1400 by 1700, a slight increase from the index. Uh, these are 2160 by 2160. So if nothing else, you know, nothing else, that is a dramatic increase in number considering that the Cosmos only went up 100 pixels or 100 you know, units in a single dimension. This is going from 1400 by 1600 to 2160 to 2160, a very large increase if you know nothing else, right? But let me put it, give it some perspective. The Pimax resolution is 3840 by 2160. So if you were to make a square display version of that, you would end up with roughly 2160 by 2160, a nearly 4K resolution in a, four, in a square picture format. Um, we believe that HP went with this square screen format because they're just gonna bring it up closer and you'll get a larger field of vision with not only your peripheral vision, but up and down. And if you have experience with VR and you've tried to look over a cliff, you really kind of have to look down a lot or look up quite a bit because you have that binocular effect. It's kind of like this. So that's the square aspect ratio will might be very wise decision. Maybe it'll be interesting to try out. We pre-ordered one, so we'll let you know how it goes. And then the really high resolution on that, we can't wait to try. We're very excited about the image quality. You know, we'd love to buy a Pimax. We just can't afford that right now at our level in, in YouTube. So please subscribe and hit that bell notification to help us out. Maybe we might be able to afford one down the line and give you our review, our engineer's perspective on it. A um, uh, little shout out for ourselves. Um, shameless shout out for ourselves. The resolution is gonna be amazing. We're really excited about that. Uh, some lesser points, uh, the field of view is gonna be 114 degrees fixed. And like we mentioned, won't be adjustable in and out. Uh, which is a slight decrease from the maximum that the index has at 130. Still pretty good. It's a slight improvement from the 110 that's pretty much standard. Um, the refresh rate is gonna be 90 hertz, which is where the index starts. It's pretty much the standard for a lot of headsets, but for a high-end visor, uh, which they're kind of pushing, pushing with that 599 price, but 90 hertz. Um, the starting point for the index because the index goes to 120 and 144. But it is arguable how much of an effect that increased refresh rate really has on your you know, visual experience in virtual reality. So it may not even be, that might not even be that big of a deal anyways. The real bummer is that it's gonna be inside out tracking uh, part of the reason why we're not really enthused about that is inside out tracking ha doesn't have a great track record. The Cosmos actually has more cameras than the HP does. And the HP will have four inside out cameras. They call it inside out tracking, by the way, because 
The sensors are built into the visor and they look out at stationary objects in the room to, to get its bearing and position and orientation. Whereas the standard method is to have sensors mounted in the room that track the motion and orientation of the visor. So like we said, um, some visors have not had a lot of luck with the inside out tracking. It's never amazing because you're always going to have that controller occlusion where if you reach back too far behind you or uh, behind your head or behind your back, that the headset is going to lose tracking with the controllers. And some visors take quite a bit of time to regain that tracking. And that would be a terrible interruption in your games to have constantly happen. So we're going to see, we're just going to have to see HP's implementation and execution of the inside out tracking and let you know uh, on that. The other part of that though, is that because it's not compatible with this Steam VR, it won't be compatible with the Knuckles controllers. And I'm really fond of my Knuckles controllers and to have to make a decision between using either the top of the line high resolution visor or the one that I can use with my Knuckles is gonna be a difficult enough decision not only making the decision to spend six hundred dollars to only have that option we really thought that we would be upgrading to the hp reverb g2 and retiring our index but without compatibility with the knuckles we're likely still going to be using the index a lot because we those those controllers are basically the best on the market right now they're the most advanced controllers uh, minus a few like independent things that you probably haven't heard of some different types of gloves and, and imitation skin we pre-ordered one so we can perform a review on it for you there at home but if we were strictly consumers we, this would have us reconsidering our purchase because we love our knuckles so much but if you were an oculus quest or rift consumer then this was this is an amazing upgrade for you you're going to get largely the same controllers that you already have come become accustomed to but you're gonna get a massive jump in picture quality other than the fact that if you become excuse the pun attached to your wireless capability uh, you're going to be missing that with the Reverb G2 being it is a PC based visor and it is plug in by uh, USB type C. We have to also tell you that the new visor is not backwards compatible with the old controllers. So you'd be retiring, replacing and retiring those. Um, but they're, you know, nothing super advanced or spectacular about them. They look decent enough. They have a thumbstick to, you know, an A and B button, basically and a system button and a menu button uh, and a grip button. But one good move about these controllers is they, they've done away with touch pads. We really don't understand Valve's decision to include the touch pads on the Knuckles controllers. Uh, in addition to the fact that touch pad is largely redundant of the thumbstick, it really crowds that surface and often it's very easy to touch it by mistake and interrupt or cause you know screw up your game because you hit something you didn't intend to you know accidentally pull the pin on the grenade and drop it at your feet ah! so good on hp for ditching the touchpad on that they are double a powered these new controllers for the reverb which you're going to either be pouring through the double A's or have to make an additional investment for rechargeable batteries and then go through the additional inconvenience of having to remove them and put them in the charger. Luckily, you can always have another pair sitting and waiting charged so you don't have to wait if you're having a long play session with strictly rechargeable controllers like the Knuckles, though we've never had a play session long enough on with the Knuckles to where they died and that was what caused us to have to put it you know take a break um but the double a controllers uh, 
have a history of having a shorter life than knuckle, like the Knuckles controllers or other controllers that have built-in recharging. Still, very our wrap up is that very exciting. We can't wait to try out the picture quality. We're sad that we can't use our controllers with it. But for most of you, this is probably great news because you're not Knuckles consumers or owners. And this would be a massive jump from your current visor. So if you're a Cosmos owner or if you're a previous Reverb owner, this would be a, an amazing upgrade for you. And if you're new to VR altogether, a great option as a first visor because it comes, the visor comes included with controllers and tracking, you know, no additional cost for sensors like some other visors like the uh, Cosmos and the Index and the Vive. Um, so we still say wait for the actual launch and see what the reviews say. We are not big fans of pre-ordering. We're going to pre-order because we want to make sure we have it on day one to review for you. But it's looking very good. It's looking very promising. Just, just wait for those reviews so you can know that there's not some kind of deal breaker in there for you. It doesn't track a great picture, doesn't track where the dam, right? So, all right. Thanks again, once again, for tuning into the VR Aperture. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to support this channel, please hit subscribe. And one additional thing, YouTube has changed with the subscription, you're hitting the bell. Uh, now it has a drop down. Please select all, a lot of our Notifications have not been going out to our subscription members because YouTube is trying to filter based on interest to even subscribers of the channel on what they'd be interested in instead of pushing out all the notifications. So thank you once again, and we hope you have a great rest of your week.